Yeah. Okay, Papa said that he's going to restart his laptop, but uh, I'm not sure. So I'm I'm mostly technical stuff, so uh, I can just say that you know, um, OK is a margin and a borrowing platform, and uh, you can also lend and uh, earn uh, interest rate. So we have a couple of places when uh, where the interest rate is pretty high. Um, we are deployed on a <clears throat> number of blockchains, uh, such as Ethereum, obviously, where we have our DAO deployed. Uh, we have uh, BSC, Polygon, uh, Arbitrum, ov obviously, and um, we are planning to extend to some other blockchains as well. Um, so the main speak is supposed to be Paris, who, who to give... Um, as I'm not really uh, good of a speaker. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so on uh, Arbitrum, we have uh, a couple of uh, If you tokens. want, I can, I, I can formally introduce you. <laughs> I feel bad. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I definitely don't want to make, it feel, make you feel like I'm throwing you into the fire here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it's not a problem really, you know. Uh, so I have to learn public speaking as well so that's part of my job hey, Paris, we you're back no. so while uh, the paris uh, while paris is uh, solving his technical issues uh, which i can't help really <laughs> but okay so we we have listed uh, frax link uh, meme uh, some stable coins wbtc uh, for the stable to stable pairs you can really do margin trade 15x uh, and uh, for the crypto, for the uh, normal crypto such as uh, Link and uh, Ethereum, uh, you can just uh, do a 5x margin. Um, we have plans to extend this to be like a even bigger, bigger leverage, and we also have plans, uh, which is we believe is going to um, to have a huge effect on the protocol is that we. Uh, plan to develop the permissionless listing framework so that uh, because right now uh, as you can imagine to create a specific pair you need to have a uh, to to secure the the protocol you need to have a oracle uh, for this uh, oracle of, or oracle price feed available for a specific pair um, but we were thinking that with the permissionless listing uh, we can uh, create something like uh, uh, like Hello? v2 uh, Hello. Like when you create a pair and uh, we are going to use probably hey. to up price feed i think paris is coming can you hear me now way. yeah oh, man, i don't know i had to i had to go get a head, pair of headphones i don't know what was happening sorry guys no worries this roman was taking it away yeah and, and i i just killed this flow so take it away roma <laughs> <laughs> okay, since Paris is back, uh, well, basically what I said is that we plan to do the permissionless listing. Right now, we are uh, started deploying the iToken, uh, iToken as a collateral, as uh, iToken is uh, our interest-bearing token. It's similar to Aave and other platforms is where you can lend to a platform and, uh, for example, you lend the USDC and then you get back the uh, iToken that represents your share. So, uh, and uh, now we are adding the possibility so, so that using this uh, iToken, you can uh, go further and even do a margin trade or a borrow using the same iToken. So, if in short, you can uh, lend to the protocol, get iToken back, and then based on your lending uh, um, amount, you can borrow from the protocol as well. So, that's pretty cool stuff. Uh, we also plan to deploy a couple of vaults, uh, but uh, probably that's an, another discussion. Uh, I'll give the Paris a chance <laughs> to speak as well. Okay, so uh, what was the question you guys were addressing? So, okay, so there actually wasn't any question. Uh, <laughs> nice. um, uh, Roman actually was just taking it away and killing it. If you want, I can just qu quickly, formally introduce everybody. Uh, even though, Roman, by the way, that was a beautiful, just kind of straight to the point pitch. Um, nonetheless, uh, for those who, are, who aren't familiar, uh, I'm Hunter from the Arbitrum team over here, uh, you know, leading a community management, uh, and I'm joined today by the Uki team. Uh, hopefully I said that correctly. Uh, Roman is representing the technical side while Paris is representing the marketing side. 
Um, and we're really just going to talk about their platform, like the, the different things you can do on it, you know, in terms of like lending, borrowing, trading, et cetera. Uh, and just kind of just dive into that. Uh, and, you know, obviously we just heard kind of the, uh, the uh, you know, quick pitch that Roman kind of gave us, which really actually gave, gave a lot of light into the protocol itself. So thank you for that, Roman. Uh, I think Paris, where, where it may make sense for you to actually kind of start off on your side is just uh, like, you know, maybe uh, maybe explaining a little bit of like how Uki actually came to be in the first place and just generally maybe how it differs itself from its competitors. Sure. Um, so, you know, for anybody who's not really familiar with Oki, uh, basically it started out as a, um, a way to leverage Ethereum to make trades. And, um, you know, obviously we, we, we do quite a bit of things from borrowing, trending, lending and staking. Um, but, you know, at, at the core ethos of Oki is uh, I think it's quite easy to see from the homepage, which would uh, be hello.oki.com. So if anybody wants to kind of open that up and check it out, I, I think it's a pretty good summary. But um, getting back on the topic, more or less, like we really try to make users feel comfortable uh, using a DEX. So, you know, um, obviously, I'm sure most of the listeners in the audience right now are DeFi users and avid DeFi users. But at the end of the day, uh, I think the reality is like people are just very, very comfortable uh, using a, a sex. And like a lot of people don't actually venture anywhere in DeFi beyond Uniswap. So um, from the first version of uh, Oki, that had uh, decentralized trading, um, we really just tried to keep it uh, in the same kind of manner where everything's kind of done on a click. And it doesn't make like a user feel too uncomfortable going into a trade or with the platform or anything itself. So if going back to the homepage thing, if you go on the homepage and you kind of click in the app, you can see it's, it's just so simple. And that's really what we aim to do, uh, to just have it be very simple for somebody so that somebody who's not used to a DEX could actually use it and be like, wow, it's actually not that different. And there are benefits to it, you know. Uh, it's instantaneous and, um, and everything else that comes with, you know, the simplicity of use. So um, I think at the core kind of design and, uh, you know, usability of the product is, is just that, trying to make it as simple as possible for people. So that's one big, big uh, differentiating factor because uh, I know it could be kind of like quant daunting for some people to even like use a bridge. Um, but also, uh, the main other differentiating factor, which I think Ramon covered as well, is uh, our upcoming permissionless listings. Um, so, you know, I, I think he told you a bit about that, but uh, that's kind of a, a feature that no one has really pulled off yet. And uh, we're looking to, uh, to get that going, um, you know, uh, I'd say this year, the next, somewhere there. Uh, but that's kind of the, the big thing for, for us and, and what we have uh, down the line, which the community has been constantly asking us for. If you don't mind me actually maybe picking a little bit at that, oh, yeah, what makes it. it so hard to have permissionless listings on like a, on like a, a margin platform like that? Yeah, that's a question for Ramon. Um, okay, so uh, the, 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 the great complexity comes from a uh, uh, security point of view. So uh, as you know, like uh, the protocols are hacks daily. And um, so having a, uh, the possibility to actually list any tokens like uh, Uniswap V2 does uh, has, you know, some security consequences, especially in the uh, in a complex code that uh, like protocol margin trading protocols have. So, um, so we the margin trading protocols it's a must that we have some kind of uh, Oracle price feed. So we have uh, we can use either a chain link price feed or uh, we can use a TWAP price feed. So, or maybe you can use uh, some other um, Oracle price feeds such as, I don't know, uh, Flux or stuff like that. Um, so obviously the Chainlink price feed and the Flux price feed, it's not available for uh, all the tokens, uh, but only for, actually they, they, they have to pass through some some scrutiny from the chain link side and then they they provide the uh the price feed uh on the tvap side of things also not a lot of things are very you know bright uh, because um, even uh, tvap is supposed to be fully decentralized but the uh, right now there are ways to let's say manipulate the price feed even uh, there are some research papers that uh, you know indicate that you can manipulate the price feed over the two or three blocks uh, it's go it's a costly 
exercise to do, but you know, it depends on the profits that you're making as well. So, so that, that that's the one part of the complexity. The second part of the complexity is that uh, we are dealing with tokens and uh, uh, sometime like from the protocol side, we are calling the transfer of function from the, from those tokens like back and forth from people wallets and uh, to the protocol and, and vice versa. So if, uh, let's say, a hacker is deploying a custom implementation of transfer of function, uh, it's, it is possible for him to actually execute the code that is not intended to be executed. So those are just, you know, um, security stuff that, that, you know, usually hackers do to, uh, to hack different protocols, let's say, in, in a simple words. Uh, so to, to do a pernicious listing, we have to mitigate all those scenarios and, uh, you know, develop a framework and, um, you know, um, think uh, wise and pass a couple of audits uh, to actually be able to, you know, uh, publicly say that um, our permissions listing is safe and uh, ready to use. Um, one other thing that I... What else? So, uh, another thing is that the uh, with the permissionless listing is that, for example, uh, it's about the isolation of the landed funds uh, because uh, you know a single uh, a failure of single uh, token shouldn't bring the whole uh, protocol down so uh, we we've seen like for example for avi avi if uh, if uh, for example usdt loses the peg then uh, people uh, with usdt actually can borrow you know the whole avi so that that's a that's a risk to the protocol. That's why Aave team basically has a framework of uh, how to you know um, which tokens to actually list. Uh, so does Oki team. Uh, we have a framework and we carefully analyze which tokens we list on our platform because uh, you know it's a risk to the protocol. With the permissionless list uh, listing, you know any tokens can be listed. That's why uh, we have to implement some kind of isolation so that like if uh, a specific pool goes down it shouldn't uh, you know all the lenders to the platform shouldn't be shouldn't lose their money or tokens so yeah those are probably core problems that we need to solve no thank, thanks for the uh, insight there and, and I, I think it's, it's it's pretty it's pretty interesting to see that um like that being kind of like like the, the biggest issue, um, especially considering that uh, you guys had mentioned that um, I think Paris mentioned that uh, you, you guys do uh, multiple audits regularly. I think in the AMA chat there, um, but you know, I mean, security is definitely very important in crypto, and, and I'm, I'm actually in that case kind of happy to see that we have, we haven't seen anyone try to front run anyone else in that opportunity, like uh, you know, and sacrificing user security, you know, for that specifically. Because I have heard about permissionless listings for a uh, margin trading and like. I'm sure that that'd be a very, uh, you know, a wanted thing. But if it's like, you know, again, at the sacrifice of use security, then, you know, I'll always say, let's just wait until we get a more, uh, you know, uh, advanced product, I guess, to put in place versus just putting it out there just to be first, you know. I totally agree with you on that. Yeah, that, that's definitely true. That's definitely true. So we... Actually, like in our mind, uh, I I believe that uh, we have all the pieces, all the technology and all the, you know, uh, algorithms available to do. So it's just we have to put them all together. And uh, I think it should be, you know, uh, good to good to, to be used. So in, in our team inside, like we have a... We are developing some um, documents, you know, to actually descri describe how things uh, should be working uh, in a permissionless listing. And uh, we basically have no, uh, you know, unsolved problems, let's say. So. Totally. No, yeah, so I think, um, I think in that case, maybe it probably makes sense to maybe hit on this one. Uh, what role does, does governance play? Uh, in, in Oki. Sure. So um, Oki has moved to like a fully decentralized or as decentralized as possible uh, protocol and uh, we're fully community governed. So, you know, the same reasons that we were discussing so much before is because it's pretty much the most uh, communicated requested feature 
Um, so, you know, everything's kind of decided in the forums on what people want to see moving forward. Uh, that being said, I know Roman was mentioning earlier that um, the DAO is wrapping up on um, iToken as collateral as well as limit orders, but it, that's not to the hindrance of permissionless listing. So uh, I think that's just kind of a testament to like what everyone wants, which is, uh, you know, the, uh, the permissionless listings, which is quite requested from the community. Um, so that's kind of the, the role of governance in OK as well. So, um, you know, everything kind of passes a vote and uh, gets discussed in uh, Telegram beforehand. Yeah, we have a, a number of quite big traders. Uh, so uh, one day I was speaking to one of our traders and he's really, you know, aware probably. He said that he needs like at least a 2 million position, uh, at least a 2 million, uh, you know, uh, to open a position he's using it. So 5x, that means that we need at least 10 million to uh, 10 million um, borrow from the protocol to actually open a 10 million positions. And uh, he explicitly said that, you know, he wants to play with the tokens that were just listed to the market. So let's say there is a new project and uh, it was just uh, listed on the market and the Uniswap will create it and, you know, people are joining and buying. So he wants to take advantage of, you know, of he basically he wants to risk and bet and uh, he wants to play it with the leverage obviously leverage trading comes at a risk as well but you know uh, some people are just uh let's say risk covers <laughs> that's all no totally here yet no yeah i mean and it's you know it's definitely important to have uh to have the, the, the opinions from like some of your uh I would say, like most valuable users, um, you know, most, most valuable can definitely be, I guess, uh, determined by what you perceive as valuable. But yeah, so yeah, uh, it's like... but then, uh, then as well, like uh, uh, margin trading is not only for for risk takers. It's also you can also protect your um, portfolio using margin. So yeah, that's also a good opportunity to actually, you know, protect your portfolio. Uh, we also had some feedback from users that were like they would want to run uh, like low leverage instead of uh, you know some kind of like ten x or or something bigger like that where people would want to run like something like a one point two x leverage on let's say Ethereum which is an asset they like uh, so that's the kind of feedback we had but um, I just wanted to get back to a previous point uh, I don't know if Roman earlier covered exactly what permissionless listings is in like a simple way uh, basically let's say there's like um, the, the newest uh, dog token craze and it's kind of exploding right um whether you want to kind of short or long it uh before that token is actually listed anywhere you wouldn't be able to do that right you'd only be able to spy spot but with permissionless listings you know with enough um governance acceptance you'd be able to quickly get that uh, asset or whatever new dog coin would be uh you know the hype of the day listed on oki and be able to trade it with margin um which hasn't been done before again so that that's kind of like a very simple uh, use case of permissionless listings, just in case it wasn't covered before, because I know we we're kind of talking a bit about the tech. Awesome, yeah, and and you know what, the uh, even if you're on marketing, I, I think uh, I think it's also it's always important to uh, be able to speak about the tech too. So <laughs> that's good to hear. Focus on the tech, sir. <laughs> Facts, yeah, especially in the bear market. Especially in the bear market. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I think um, then the, the next appropriate question to ask here is uh, just generally, I guess, what uh, like what's your guys' vision on the future of margin trading is, um, and if anything, what you think uh, needs to change for it to really just become more adopted. Uh, Ramon, you want to take that one? Yeah, yeah. So um, you know, um, before joining crypto, I was working at uh, trading firms. And uh, margin trading uh, was never like a huge, uh, had a huge popularity like in, uh, in um, let's say, how do you say that? Like for people who are not, you know, uh, aware of the finances in general, uh, it's mostly, you know, when you go to the sex and you apply for like, let's say, interactive brokers, you apply for the margin trading or TD Ameritrade. You apply it for inter uh, for the margin trading, and you have to pass specific requirements. Uh, you have to know what you're doing. 
and you know and uh, it's a you know it's they have to make sure that you're you know what you're doing you're accepting but sometimes the requirements are like just you know just some bureaucracy so we're trying to make sure that uh, um, people are aware that they can lose everything at the same time uh, we trying to to lower the requirements for people to be able to do margin trading uh, globally uh, and i think uh, yeah and uh, yeah we actually want want to you know educate people more as well um i don't think like uh, margin trading is going to be uh, like the same level as trading uh, ever because it's more it takes it it has more risk uh, in it so i don't think we're going to have that much popularity compared to compared to just a simple swap let's say but uh, re in regards to volume uh, usually margin trading platforms are um, gathering much more volume because you are using leverage so the, the fees to the platform should be substantial no totally and, and, and yeah, go for it go for it uh, yeah, th this is this is it basically. So I'm I'm not sure if everybody familiar, but uh, I I would say that it the margin trading is not for all the people. So we don't uh, want to you know all uh, uh, unexperienced people to lose their money, but uh, people who really know how to trade and uh, who know what they're doing and they are willing to risk. And uh, I think uh, a lot of crypto people are like that because. Uh, uh, as we all know that you don't put your money in crypto that are not, you know, uh, that are life savings, let's say. So, uh, so yeah, so this is it. You just don't, don't use uh, your life savings in, in crypto in general. And this comes, uh, this is especially true in margin trading. Don't try to bet. Um, try to, you know, uh, manage your portfolio wise. So it's to my understanding that you guys actually have something called uh, Oki uh, University. Be able to maybe shed a little more light on that because it feels like that maybe kind of ties into a little bit of just that education standpoint. Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, it does kind of tie into the uh, the homepage and the simplicity of it. So you know, um, when you guys were kind of going off on a uh, on a more technical side of things, you know, obviously um, all that tech is 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 quite you know important, and uh, it's it's obviously a large part of the protocol. But I mean, uh, to the end user. Um, we try to keep the, the interface and the uh, UI UX as simple as possible. Um, so, you know, Oki University is kind of the same thing. Uh, it has articles for beginners, uh, a bit about uh, what's going on in the markets, and uh, a bit about news all mixed into one. Um, I, I've seen a lot of DeFi platforms trying to uh, have educational um, like aspects to them to try to bring on uh, new users from that traditional uh, sex experience. So um, that's just our uh, like, take on it. And uh, obviously, everything's kind of focused on uh, what we do and, and what we see going on. No, that's great, and and you know, frankly, I, I think uh, like 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 um, tools like that are just, I think like infinitely more just valuable to people, especially because it's like, you know, like you can have, you can have a protocol, obviously, that you know lives on chain and, and does what people like want it to do, and like you know, margin trading, lending, borrowing, whatever it is. I think having that added service to you know, actually educate people on the product itself sounds a little obvious, but like you know, just having it there is is I think is really really key. Just for you know, new users coming into the space, or you know, from those guys all the way just to, to OGs that are entering the space and just want to know more about your project, right? Yeah, of course, and and you know, it, again, it might seem like really casual to us to to talk about these things, like oh, that's so simple. But you know, um, a lot of my friends, I, I don't know, I can't really speak for others that aren't so crypto minded. Uh, again, I've never left Binance, you know, never left Coinbase, uh, never like plugged in a, a contract address to find a new token. So um, it's really kind of aimed at people like that, as well as, uh, you know, we, we try to hit that balance where uh, it, it can capture someone new, but not bore someone who um, is already very knowledgeable on everything. Yeah, I actually would love uh, uh, more tokens to be withdrawable to the Arbitrum directly, for example, so that because the fees are so cheap. so. Uh, like before, 
I have some uh, obviously I have some funds on, on Binance. So before buying uh, uh, buying something, I would consider you know withdraw to Ethereum, s- swap, and uh, the transaction cost would uh, total up to like a hundred dollars, uh, which you know <laughs> it's kind of expensive. Uh, so instead now you can withdraw, for example, to Arbitrum and swap, uh, or even not even deposit to SX. Like uh, have your have your uh, funds to any L2 platform, any L2 uh, blockchain, and you know just swap there. And liquidity is pretty much good. Uh, so uh, I think in the long term uh, we are going to see more adoption for the uh, decentralized exchanges. Uh, they already bypassed the volume of the some some of them bypassed the volume of Binance, for example. So. No, exactly. And, and, and I mean, I think, I mean, at least from our side, you know, like in terms of like uh, adoption for like a sometimes exchange standpoint and even just, you know, project standpoint, like, you know, we're seeing more and more projects like kind of ma- making the move over to Arbitrum like every day, um, you know, and if nothing else, just because of like, you know, again, obviously because, you know, we're layer two on Ethereum, you, know, you, you get that, that's that sweet protection from Ethereum, but also like the snappiness and just the cheapness of being on a layer two. Uh, but also, you know, just the fact that we have such like a bustling uh, a DeFi ecosystem here, obviously you guys being being a part of it, um, it's almost like a no-brainer to just kind of be like, yeah, like well, let's just go where literally all the innovation is happening right now um, and kind of just try to make a stance there. Because uh, very frankly, you know, it's, I think I think my favorite thing at least about, um, about seeing projects kind of deploy here is that it's a very, very even playing field. Where it's like, like we're always happy to introduce projects to one another, and you know, kind of get facilitate uh, any t- any types of partnerships going on, because um, that is definitely a norm here. Um, at least uh, on, on Arbitrum One, um, so it's just really cool just to see projects innovating here on like pretty much a platform where, assuming like you kind of like hit all the right metrics, you know, you're pretty much good. Like you know, the, the users will come if you build a great product, essentially. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I fully, I fully agree with you. So it's easier to collaborate when you know the uh, blockchain is not so expensive to use, let's say. And uh, uh, for me, for example, as a developer, it's much easier to test stuff on uh, Arbitrum than on uh, Ethereum, obviously. So, for example, nowadays mm, we have deployed, uh, we have deployed our protocol on a number of blockchains. So. My deployment actually starts from the Arbitrum, usually new stuff, because uh, it's just easier to test and it is uh, mostly uh, Ethereum-like, so the, the closest to Ethereum as possible. And I don't have to spend uh, like a uh, $1,000 on different transactions just to test that everything is deployed properly. Uh, even though we're testing before uh, on fork, but you know, even after the live deployment, you still have to go around and check stuff to make triple sure that everything is fine. And with Nitro, the uh, transaction cost is going to even more down. So I'm happy to see uh, Arbitrum uh, improving for everybody. Yes, yes, for the users and the projects, of course. Um, are there any other uh, services, by the way, that, that, that maybe I missed that uh, that, that uh, Oki provides for users or projects? Um, lending, borrowing, and uh, staking, which, uh, you know, if you have Oki tokens, it's going to earn you a percentage of all the fees generated from Oki. We also plan to do limit orders, and they're actually developed and uh, deployed. Um, but we need we are building UI on top of it. Uh, so... We expect the limit orders to be by the end of this year, but you know, don't don't. Uh, it's not an official uh, uh, official uh, deadline. Uh, so the, the the code is there. It's deployed on the, one of the blockchains, and uh, the UI guys are um, building uh, UI for it. Uh, we're going to use um, uh, Chainlink Keeper to actually execute the orders. And we plan to use chain link keepers for um, for um, li- liquidations of the positions that are under the water. So uh, also another thing that we want to do is um, deploy some vaults 
so that you can, uh, for example, uh, um, use leverage to actually, um, you know, to, uh, how do you call it? Farm? Sure. For, uh, I can't explain it right now, but basically you, you can uh, use the, lev the leverage of the protocol to uh, earn even more rewards. Uh, so, for example, some some protocol, let's say, is giving a reward for staking. Uh, but using our protocol, you can leverage and stake even more. Obviously, there is a, a risk. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to write an article on it soon. I hope that uh, intrigues everybody. Basically, leveraged vol farming or earning. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, yeah, you guys definitely have a lot of stuff uh, <laughs> uh, coming down the pipeline here. I think... Um, yeah, the, the interesting part is that we are, uh, compared to other teams, we, we are really a small team. So, like, there are, like, three or four Solidity developers and two UI guys. So, we do a lot of stuff in the background. So, uh, I hope we're, we're driving the innovation. A little bit. Wow, really? So you guys are you guys are really small, actually. Wow. So is, is the entire organization like around like around that size as well, or? Uh, so Paris, how many people are there? I think we say about like uh, ten, twelve people max. You know, not not including uh, full time. Oh, sorry. I mean, including full time. My bad. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, <laughs> that's crazy! Wow, look at that. That's actually, uh, that's, you know, it's funny. I think, uh, I think your marketing actually like, like, like lead, leads me to believe that you guys are actually a much like more sophisticated team. <laughs> like, it's just getting terms of size, I should say. <laughs> uh, that's very, that's uh, very kind of you. Thank you <laughs> for the nice words. No, uh, we we have uh, we we do everything in house. So um, we have a uh, an illustrator in house, uh, writer, um, and uh, yeah, our our UI works pretty close with our illustrator and. And me and we kind of get all the call made. So it's it's like we have like a little media team within our team. So uh, we don't outsource. Wow, that that is crazy. And no, and no, definitely uh, commendable too. Um, in that case, then I think I think Roman, you may have pretty much touched on it. Uh, but are there any like kind of like uh, any like uh, solid dates in terms of like a roadmap uh, on what you guys are are having to deliver uh, coming forward? And again, if you already said it, then. I need to repeat, but <laughs> just want to make sure we cover everything. So we, we can talk about some other things that we had in mind, but uh, we're kind of delaying it a tiny bit um, as it's not the most important thing for the community. Uh, we kind of wanted to do uh, very, very social features as in like um, uh, social features linked to NFTs, which I saw some other protocols are doing. We wanted to do it for a while, but um, as well as, you know, when you share your profile, which would be kind of your trader's profile linked to your, t uh, to your NFT, uh, it would be ideal to have a sort of rebate system in place. Uh, although right now it's not the focus of the developers, but uh, I think when the NFT market kind of heats up, um, I think it'll be worth revisiting on the on the roadmap uh, a bit more of like a, a social aspect to trading, uh, which is not the main focus right now. But again, um, it, it's it's in that uh, you know uh, community kind of goals. I would say. Yeah, I definitely like the idea of uh, gamifying, gamifying, gamifying a little bit, uh, especially since the protocol are transparent. Uh, everybody can see everybody transactions. Uh, imagine you can just see in real time what are other people are doing, uh, especially what whales are doing, for example. And you just you know maybe copy them, maybe not copy them. You know stuff like that. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Oh yeah, and did I hear you mention NFTs in there? The, the word NFT did that just pop up? <laughs> oh, for sure. I mean, uh, look at our little profile. <laughs> we, we look like NFTs already, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I tell you, I think, I think like the NFTs are like the biggest marketing hack that like has still yet to be unlocked in crypto yet. Like you know, I mean, I, mean, I think like the the Odyssey initiative that that that, that, we've, that we had kind of going on in house, um, and that we're going to re resume soon, uh, going forward. Uh, it's definitely a good example of that that people just like just like representing ownership of something you know that they can tie them 
tie their kind of personality to in a way. And yeah, your NFTs are actually great examples of it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, it's, it's all a uh, all little Okies in, in the Okie world. So, <laughs> yeah, we we wanted to do something more with 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 the brand and and kind of already exploring the NFTs, but um, the, the I I don't think the timing is great for now, and and obviously uh the referrals um don't take precedence over uh, something like permissionless listings and limiting orders. So uh, I think it's just kind of icing on top of those uh uh tech features. Totally. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I definitely, uh, I definitely agree. And, and, and I mean, I think, I think, uh, like, it's funny, because I, I think it was like NFTs didn't really start kind of getting any kind of any kind of traction until, I mean, I know now it's, it's a little while, but like, because crypto, crypto time moves so quick, maybe like a year and a half, like two, I would, I would say a year and a half ago, probably is actually when NFTs really started kind of, um, like, getting kind of like, a, like mainstream, I guess you could say, like attention. Um, so it's, it's still really early, and, I, and I'm definitely interested to see kind of what uh, what role NFTs can play in DeFi, and you know, um, especially like, you know, like margin trading and lending and borrowing or anything like that. That's for sure. Yeah, I've seen some attempts at it's, uh, trying to link them all together, um, but I haven't seen something uh, like fully gamified yet. So uh, you know, I, I think that's ripe for someone to uh, move into. Agreed. Agreed. So I think uh, for the most part, that's it uh, on my end. Um, we can definitely take any questions from the audience uh, if they want to you know, come up and raise their hand or, or something like that. Um, but if not, I'll always, I'm sure they can you know, visit, visit the, uh, the Oki Discord as well, just in case uh, they have any questions for the team, I, I presume. We've got 230 people in here. Nobody's allowed to be shy. Dude, this, I'm pretty sure this is crypto. Like everyone, everyone's shy in crypto, <laughs> even even if it is online. <laughs> all right, all right, guys, come on, come on, let's clap our hands, let's get going, let's get some excitement. <laughs> I see we have a Borat in there. We have a we have a lot of faces in here. It's, a, it's a great audience you guys have, to be honest. Hey, this audience is yours, my friend. Here we go. We're bringing up uh, EJ. EJ, hello. Hello. I just have a quick question on the money market protocol within Uki. I was wondering what the collateral ratio, you know, what the collateral ratio for the lending side is. A collateral ratio for what exactly? Like if I deposit collateral into the ratio uh, into the money market, like if I deposit the USDT, how much collateral would someone need to post in order to borrow it? Okay, so that's a great question. Um, so first of all, uh, it uh, right now the uh, collateral, you know, the risk factors are uh, uh, driven by the uh, protocol, and uh, they can be different. Uh, per, they they can be different on per token base. So for example, with uh, USDT and USDC, you can actually you know borrow. Uh, it's probably hundred five percent collateralization, uh, but uh, all other coins i don't remember exactly we should have it somewhere on the docs but i i believe it was like 125 percent so you have to call it a short 130 um it's also it's uh, it's a good question so uh, re regarding you know explaining to people what is the uh, collateralization ratio uh, it's actually a ratio uh, like if you borrow something uh, from the bank for example uh, if your ra if your collateral to loan ratio drops below a specific uh, percentage, uh, the bank is going starts to, to call you, you know, and asks to deposit more or uh, liquidate your position. So we are doing the same, uh, but as a, as a margin trading platform, we actually have two variables. First is uh, 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 is uh, initial margin, and the second one is actually the liquidation uh, value. Uh, so that, like, for example, you can't uh, open your position right at the liquidations, be, uh, right at the liquidation uh, value because you'll be immediately liquidated, probably, you know, even the smallest market uh, movement. Um, so I, uh, EJ, uh, I advise you to go to our site. I think uh, we should have a section somewhere to actually list the collateralization for all the uh, coins. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, most of them are around 120, 130. Uh, but are you looking for something specific or 
like do do you advise to have a bigger risk or lower risk? I'm a very low risk person. Uh, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, and you can also you can also use less risk. Uh, you always so for example you can always be over collateralized and you know uh, that's uh, I advised all the people to do that and not use um, all the risk possible because uh, and a lot of times the protocols are just you know. Uh, advising people to use most of the risks, which it shouldn't be. Yeah, so you, you can collateralize over like 800%. Uh, there's, no, there's no limit to that. Awesome, thank you. And I have another small question about the Uki token. I know it's multi-chain on four different chains, and I was wondering, like, are the bridges that allow you to go between the um, chains, are they wrapped bridges or are they native asset bridges? Like, are you able to transfer Uki from one chain to another and it be the same, regardless of the same as it was in the last chain? Or is there a backend wrapped asset risk if I want to transfer it from one chain to another? Like if I want to go from like BSC to Polygon, I lost half of your question. But between BSC, Arbitrum, Polygon, and Ethereum. Sorry? I think you're cutting in and out, Roman. Okay, it's probably my internet. Okay, it should be better. So I'm saying that if you need bridge your key between uh, different chains you can use seller to do that efficiently uh, there is uh, not not a lot of liquidity but if we see a demand for it we can definitely add more uh, the rest of the question um, uh, i didn't hear well so i can't really say oh so that answers it thank you yeah so i think awesome thank you for coming up ej appreciate your questions no problem. Thanks for having me. All right. So let's see here, Pam. Uh, is there anyone else in the audience? I think I see a couple of hands here. You guys have uh, how many uh, questions do you think we have time for? <laughs> Just to make sure I want to. Make, I'm uh, cognizant of your. Um, oh, we're, we're all yours. Well. No worries. Dope, dope. Okay, cool. All right. Let's see here. I, I got to go through here manually because Discord's being weird. All right. Let's see. We should. Again, just put invited up. Um, Haram Malik. Let's see if he comes up. There. If not, I'll bring up Pan Chanan. Let's see. I invited both of you guys up to speak, so let me know if uh, you know if it works. But that was a great question, by the way, by EJ. Yeah. I think uh, Haram Malik has raised the hand. I um, tried inviting them up, but it doesn't seem like they're responding here. Um, let's see here. Haram Malik, can you uh, try raising your hand again? Maybe um, take a bug on my side, but... Here we go. I think he's some here we go. Okay, got this person here too. Salman Khan. Or not. Wait, hold on. Yeah, the, the stage has been very weird recently. For some reason I can't approve a request, but I have to actually invite them to speak. Even if they already raised their hand. Um Yeah. Give it a couple more minutes here. Let's see if, uh, if anyone's able to come on. I guess actually what, what could also help too, is if you guys want to put the, uh, I assume you guys have a Discord, correct? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, feel free to put that in the, in the AMA chat too, just just in case people want to kind of just join the community in the meantime. And sure, I would. Uh, familiar. Uh, how do I... AMA chat, great. Um, sure. Let me let me throw in our links real quick. Let's 
Sí. Do you guys see anyone else with their hands raised? I think I tried inviting them up, but they didn't respond to it. <laughs> see anything on my end. All right, I think in, I think in that case we can probably end off here. Um just because you know I don't want to keep you guys on here waiting if no one's gonna raise their hand. <laughs> or if it, or the stage isn't gonna work. No, um, no just but either way. Are there any just like last call outs you maybe you want to just, you know, give to the people in terms of like if they want to join the community, where should they go and if they want to learn more about OK, uh, you know. Yeah, sure. I, I just their, posted uh, the uh, the links in the um, in the chat. So I would I would kind of urge people to go to the homepage, uh, read a bit about it and then, uh, you know, click right into the app if you'd like. Or uh, I'd consult people to uh, kind of hop in our telegram. So um, thanks for all the listeners that really showed up, you know, and I appreciate that. And, and again, uh, Hunter, like this was a super professional operation. Your community is obviously great. We're happy to be on Arbitrum, and uh, you know, thank you again for for all the nice words and and uh, letting us, you know, uh, take up uh, this time. Of course, our community is your community. Thanks for yes, having thank us. Thank you for coming on. Yep. You guys have a great day. Bye, everybody. You too. Have a good one. Adios, y'all.